Right, Jonathan, thanks for being interviewed for this promotional video for the, for the MA. Can I just ask you, just to introduce yourself, particularly around your union role, please? Yeah, my name's uh, Janet and I'm a PCS rep. I, um, I started as a rep as a union learning rep, came into it about nine years ago. Um, I then went on and developed the role to become regional learning officer uh, for Yorkshire and Humberside and I've taken on other roles as well, site rep, health and safety and equality. Um, my rep roles have grown, but whilst I've been a rep, I became more and more aware of various issues okay. within the workplace. I was um, fortunate enough to be given materials coming across my desk that made me aware of uh, the impact that certain laws and legislation were having on people. Right. And I felt it was very unfair. Right. Like most reps, you feel as if you want to go out there and do something about it. Right. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks for that. Um, is It'd be really good if you just could, just could get some sense of why you wanted to enrol on the MA. Yeah, well, it goes back to that uh, that sense of injustice, really. I right. suddenly became aware that there was a lot happening and I needed to be better equipped to be able to deal with that. Right. Uh, I wanted to be able to put those arguments forward. I wanted to understand the bigger picture. Uh, and I wanted some credibility, I suppose, really, because to defend people and defend the injustice I was seeing. Right. And I think this... MA has actually equipped me to be able to do that. Wonderful, thanks for saying that. And then um, just a little bit really on what's been your experience so far? I mean, obviously we're at the start of year two, you're kind of moving forward with your dissertation research, but how, how can you best summarise what your experience of year one has been like? Right, year one, when I first arrived, yeah. to be perfectly honest, I was scared. Right, okay. I was very scared and right. I sat in the room and I wondered whether I was out of my depth. Right. Um, I soon realised that other people were feeling exactly the same way as me because it was that fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. But I cannot believe the journey I've made in those 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not the person I was when I started out. Right. The support that you get from the, uh, the other students and from the tutors is invaluable. Yeah. Uh, and it really develops and picks up. Um, they've given me the information, the skills, the knowledge to actually equip myself to feel as if I can go out there now and state an argument. Right. And, put this in. and it's actually given me um, more credibility in the workplace, oh, to right, be perfectly okay. honest. From the point of view of, uh, in the past, I would be putting an argument forward, possibly over the T point. Right. I wasn't happy with A, B or C, and people would just say, oh, it's just Janet, she's a TU rep, what do you expect? She's going to say those sort of things. They don't do that anymore. Oh, right, okay. Now they actually come to me and they listen to me and they ask me my opinion on things. And that's because I've now got the evidence and the knowledge to back up my arguments. Wonderful, wonderful. So j just on that, just, just the last question then. Um, why, why do you think uh, people should think about enrolling on the MA? If, if there's a similar background to yourself, you know, a number of years as a trade union, it's done a number of courses. What do you think people should be thinking about in terms of uh, thinking about enrolling on the, on the programme? Um, I wouldn't hesitate. Right. If you've got the opportunity, go for it. Uh, it's invaluable. Your confidence will grow. Your, the skills, the knowledge, there are no negatives. Right. Um, it is hard work. I can't deny that. You have, to, you, know, you have to be prepared to work on it, but anything worth having is worth working for. And why should education just be for an elite few? Wonderful. What a wonderful way to end. Okay, Janet, thank you very much. for being interviewed for this promotional video for the new MA programme. Just for the benefit of those watching the video, can you just ask you to introduce yourself, please? Uh, I'm Kath Holder. I'm a Unison Workplace Rep um, and in the second year of the MA. Lovely. That, that's great. Thank you very much. I think it's really beneficial for those of thinking about enrolling on the MA, just to get a sense of who's currently a student. Uh, but also, the first question is, why did you decide to enrol on the MA? Um, I just finished a diploma in employment law run by the TUC and I was keen to continue with the same research, uh, taking it further. Wonderful, that's great. And how, how would you describe your experience of the MA so far? Um, it's been brilliant. It doesn't feel like um, work at all. Right, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's a joy to do. Right, lovely. And could you just give us an idea of what your dissertation research is around? Uh, the effects of neoliberalism on the education sector and I'm linking that to uh, a rise in stress-related injury. Right, okay. So, uh, and you're actually using your own school experience for, for that? For some of it, yes. Right, okay. And just one last comment. I mean, just generally, given your experience of the MA, why would you encourage other people to think about enrolling on the programme? Um, there's an amazing sense of just team spirit really uh, with the tutors and the students and 
we we all sort of work really well together. So Wonderful. It's a solidarity, really. That's lovely. Okay, Kath, thank you very much. Agreeing, uh, to be interviewed for this promotional video for the new MA program. Could you just do us a favour in the first instance, just introduce yourself, but particularly your your work and its relationship to trade unions in the UK? Okay, um, my name is Brian Knott. I am um, a solicitor working for a firm called Simpson Miller. We have worked for um, different trade unions for getting on for 100 years now, um, and particularly work with the CWU and the GMB um, in the UK. Um, my role involves working closely with a number of um, trade unionists. Um, and so although I'm not a trade union officer, um, I'm very much immersed in the trade union movement. Sure. Um, I'm active in my trade union branch, but um, it doesn't really go further than that at that level. Um, but I sort of live and breathe the trade union movement um, in a professional capacity. Sure. And in a personal one as well, of course. And, and yeah. Personal yeah, thanks. Yes. Can I ask, um, I mean, given, not least given your considerable workload, and political activism. Given all of that, what was your kind of primary motivations to enrol on the MA? Um, I've been thinking for some time that I wanted to um, dig deeper into some of the issues um, around um, politics generally, the trade union movement, but left politics, um, and um, where there were perhaps some of the answers that we weren't seeing coming through traditional politics um, from the Labour Party at the time, um, and it was. I guess motivated by a desire to take some time out to um, really look at some of the bigger issues in depth um, and try and um, rethink my politics a little bit perhaps. Sure. I, I mean given that, are you able to give an example of the way in the, the, which the MA has possibly helped deliver that outcome? Yes, uh, definitely. Um, we talk a lot. Um, today about um, globalisation, mm -hmm. neoliberalism, some of the sort of the bigger um, influences on um, society and working people um, and it's been an opportunity to really um, read around that subject, debate the subject and get a much better understanding. Um, words like neoliberalism mm -hmm. are sort of banded around quite a lot in the left and I'm not sure that um, people always um, understand what that means. Um, and that's a drawback because it means that when we're talking to other people um, and trying to explain these concepts to them, um, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily resonate with sure. people because we're not um, really making the argument well. It is a um, difficult concept um, to some extent and so I think it's really helped to take the time out to understand you know, where the economic direction of um, society is going at the moment. Wonderful, that's great. Thanks for giving that example. I suppose lastly, just reflection on your first year of the programme as you move into the dissertation phase. Is there any particular message you want to give to, to potential applicants about why they should think about enrolling on the MA? Um, I think one of the um, things that's been great about the MA is studying with a group of like-minded people, mm -hmm. um, tutors and students, um, so that we're on a bit of a um, learning pathway together. Sure. Um, it's been a very supportive process. Um, it has been a hard work at times. There has been times where you know we've had to set aside weekends to get uh, to meet deadlines, but it's been worth it, and it's um, it's something where I'm going to come away from it um, having felt that it's been a very worthwhile two years spent um, doing something that I've loved. Wonderful. Brian yeah, Calvin, thank thanks for agreeing to the interview. Can I just ask, just for the benefit of the video for prospective applicants for the MA, could you just introduce yourself and your job role, please? Yeah, my name's Calvin de Tuana. I work for Unison as an assistant action officer in the strategic organising unit in Unison's head office. Wonderful, thanks. And can I ask, um, obviously, your, your um, application for the MA came out of Ruskin's yeah. close working relationship with yeah. Unison, yeah. Uh, so it, was, it was seen as valuable to your job. Um, can I just ask, um, now you've done a year of the programme, um, what do you feel from your, in terms of your particular role, what's been the value of coming on the MA? Um, I think um, 
from prior to coming onto this course, um, I felt that there was a gap in my knowledge, right. um, that a lot of people that had been on the course had much more comprehensive knowledge of the history of the trade union movement right. okay. in it. So I needed to fill those gaps, and, um, and I think it was essential to um, the way that I do my job and the organising work that I do that um, I had that knowledge. Wonderful. And can I just now you've had that year's experience, what, what would you think? I mean, particularly from what other people doing a similar role in unison and other unions, uh, why do you think? What do you think they would benefit from enrolling on the MA? Um, I think it gives you an appreciation of what's happened in the past right. and what's happening internationally, all the different factors that are influencing where we are now. Right. And also, it gives you a good appreciation of the kind of strategies that are being used to um, confront some of the. the, the um, dangers that are happening out there or the attacks that are happening right. and um, really makes you think about how we do what we're doing and why we're doing it and what we need to think about in the future wonderful that's great yeah. thank you very much right, you. okay Ariel thank you very much for agreeing to this short interview um, as I've explained to you this interview really is for new applicants of the MA program both within the UK and internationally and what I'm going to aim towards is asking you questions about why you feel in your experience it's beneficial to undertake the MA programme. But just for the benefits of colleagues just viewing this video, can I just ask you to introduce yourself and your current role please? Yeah, thank you. Thanks Ian. Uh, I am uh, Ariel Castro. I am the Senior Programme Officer for Asia Pacific of the programme for workers' activities here at the International Training Centre of the ILO in Turin. Excellent. And prior to this, I was uh, for five years Senior Specialist on Workers' Activities in the ILO Decent Work Team, De Decent Work Team for South Asia uh, in New Delhi, where I uh, provided assistance and supported the work of unions in South Asia. Great, thank you. And as, as people watching this video will know, I'm here with you this week because you very kindly invited me to teach alongside you on the yeah. course um, Organising Strategies for Development and Inclusion. And it's great to be teaching mm -hmm. with you this week, a real, a real privilege. Mm -hmm. Just taking a bit of a step back, you were amongst the very first cohort of full-time students yeah. to undertake the MA programme at Ruskin uh, back in 08, 09. Um, can you just tell us, at that time you were Head of Education at the Philippines TUC, you would have had many options um, in terms of postgraduate study, uh, both closer to home mm -hmm. and in North America, for example. At that point in time, what was attractive about the MA programme to you and the opportunity to come to Ruskin College? I think what attracted me the most about Ruskin College was uh, the word, the, the phrase which was written in the website of uh, Ruskin and I was quite struck by it. It's, and there they said offering a second chance for adults. Oh, okay, yeah. And I think that was what struck me because uh, for about when, since working for the unions and I was with the unions for 19 years I had never had a chance to even think about my own education. Sure. So I thought that uh, when I read that uh, piece of a phrase in the in the website I was telling myself that perhaps yes uh, it could be th there is a second chance and mm -hmm. I would and I would like to avail of that second chance so I thought of me uh, thought of writing although uh, it was uh, I should say a uh, shot in the dark uh, mm -hmm. so to speak uh, I uh, just emailed and then asked about details on the on the about the, the about the course and they gladly responded and provided me information I was quite attracted with the fact that they were they were also providing adult age, adults giving mm -hmm. a chance for adults giving other opportunity for adults because I would have actually been I would have gone through the other universities but they I thought that maybe at Ruskin adults will be treated differently because mm -hmm. there is a difference between adult education and also the traditional modes of education sure. so I yeah. thought that maybe uh, at Ruskin I would be treated as an adult my sure. experiences and my my years of union involvement would be taken into consideration sure. and I didn't re and uh, yeah I, I didn't really commit a mistake it was I didn't right. uh, yeah and I was treated well there of course Ian <laughs> in particular and Sue treated me well in the and assisted me the tutors were very kind to understand where we are we were all coming from assisted us all through the process of research 
and uh, it, you know, you know, I, it has taken a long while for me to do real research because in the, in the union field it was not the methodological sure. approach of research, but here they had painstakingly assisted the the, the full-time students in particular to look at research and follow to the letter the uh, the uh, the approach. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, very kind, and also the environment within the. the uh, the in within Ruskin because if I had chosen to go to a regular university for my MA I would not be in the company of trade unionists mm -hmm. where I would feel comfortable and also discussing and having a you know an exchange a debate around trade union movements so I thought that being in an environment where my fellow trade unionists were present I think would offer me an opportunity to learn more sure yeah. and the third one was about renewal I am uh, trade union renewal. I am uh, I'm of the belief that uh, unions need renewal strategies, and no, uh, at that time, and I was looking for a, a chance for a higher a, a higher degree. No one would point to uh, trade union renewal strategies as a topic sure. of of the of the study. So I was quite attracted to the trade union renewal strategies which Ruskin offered as well. So and now I have, I'm putting that into uh, real practice with the, with the work that I'm doing for the, first with the ILO and now with the, uh, with the training center of the ILO. That's wonderful. Yeah. And obviously from a Ruskin point of view, um, hearing from alumni about the impact of the program is, is fundamentally important because the program exists. Yes, it's an academic exercise. Uh, people learn re research techniques. But it is a program of action. It is a program of impact. Yeah. Um, so just moving on then to, to the kind of final area, I'd just like to ask you about um, on reflection. It's kind of uh, getting on for six, seven years since you've done the program. Uh, you've 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 said you've worked extensively for the ILO. Um, on reflection, um, both for UK students and students overseas, why why would you say that individuals still should think about? enrolling on the MA program, what, what benefits do you think others would get from it? I think uh, if you are really passionate about trade unions, if you are passionate about the trade union movement and how in these present times trade unions could survive mm. uh, and also con basically confront the challenge and overcome the challenges yeah. and become uh, become a solid trade union once again. I think Ruskin offers that because of the extensive look at not just the UK unions, but also uh, the other unions that exist. No? So these, uh, these uh, linkages will allow you to think more about what you can do to uh, you know, do more for the trade union movement, do more for the workers who are violated who are suffering from in the uh, from decent work deficits who are suffering from inhumane treatment who are still suffering from slavery what you can do more and i think the study at Ruskin could offer you that opportunity at the same time as well putting uh, putting these things into uh, a proper a proper framework of action you know mm -hmm. you can of course you can do research but Ruskin allows you to not just do research, but also to make sure that the, your research could also be applied in in, in practice. Sure. Because most, as we know, most researchers will just be in the shelves, you know, sure. presented in an academic forum. But I think over at Ruskin, you do research, which is which is practical and which will be applied in eventually in your work. And you will, as I said, as I keep saying, you will be in the company of real trade unionists. And I don't think any other institution. Uh, can offer that environment where a fellow trade unionist like you or, or from a different part of the world would be doing a study and uh, you know you all of you are having the same same commitment and same dedication to make sure that the trade union movement continues to, uh, to con so-called continues to struggle. That's yeah. wonderful. Errol, thank you very much for your time and seeing as we're in Italy I should say grazie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank there you go. very much. Thank you. Hi, I'm at the ILO's International Training Centre in Turin. I'm here for a week's teaching. The particular course that I'm teaching on this week has been organised by Ariel Castro, who heads the centres Asia and South Pacific region. Ariel completed the MA at Ruskin in 2006 and 7. 
he'd come to Ruskin via the Philippines TUC where he's head of education. This kind of work that Ruskin's engaged with with the ILO is representative of our significant links with uh, the international labour movement and the institutions that are attached to that movement. It also kind of helps give students an insight on the way that we provide links to uh, trade unionists internationally. The students attending the course this week come from countries stretching from Nepal, uh, Myanmar, Jordan, Cambodia. Significant violators of trade union human rights, and particularly the ILO conventions. So some of the teaching this week covers some of the technical issues about reporting ILO um, breaches through the ILO supervisory mechanism. My teaching though is focused on some of the core issues of the MA programme around how we analyse the relationship between trade union structures and the way that trade unions gain and apply power or through the workplace and through the society more broadly. It's through these links, as I've said, that we can enable MA students uh, to get a real grassroots sense of what's happening globally in some of those countries and more broadly also. What we'd like to do is to be able to use our links through the ILO to the trade unionists who have attended the course this week and our many other links to ensure that you have a good experience on the MA programme and get a real sense globally of what organised labour looks like, feels like and what some of the major challenges are and of course using the MA programme to look at some of those responses okay, as well. Rama, thank you very much for being interviewed. Um, I'm, putting this in, I'm putting these clips together to give potential applicants of the MA program that run at Ruskin College a, a feel for the kind of trade unionists that Ruskin makes a connection with and that they can link with when doing their research uh, globally. Um, I wonder, would you mind Aaron, just just introducing yourself and telling us which, which, con which country you're from and which trade union please? Yes, okay, it's the first time before I uh, have a present about my uh, trade union situation and movement in my country. Yeah. Yes, I would like to present my stuff. My name is Anrama. Mm -hmm. I come from Cambodia Labour Confederation, acronym in CLC. Yeah. And we are work in independent trade union in Cambodia in order ah. to fight for justice, social protection and uh, decent work for workers in Cambodia. As you know, uh, from 1993 of our constitution law, uh, we have right to create trade union, but most of the trade union, they are pro-political trade union. Yeah. Those union, they don't do anything or activities in order to provide a lot of benefit to the member or mm -hmm. protect to the member. But what they are doing yeah. is for the political voice. But until uh, 1997, okay, the labor law of Cambodia has been passed. So is there are three kinds of the trade union in Cambodia. The first is pro political union, the second is pro employer political union, and the second is uh, independency union. Yeah. So nowadays we are doing any uh, activities in order to develop our independency uh, union. Yeah. Uh, we have right to uh make a cba a bargaining collective yeah in order to provide a lot of benefit to our uh, membership and nowadays we are trying to do everything and any combine in order to uh, make a minimum wage nowadays we have uh, two big activities of compliance in order to uh, demand to the government and the employer association the first one we uh, we we do the compliance in the in order to demand the minimum wage $177 yeah. per month. And the second one is uh, we demand uh, to the government in order to stop the activities with uh, new trade union law in the right. Cambodia. And right. it is the best, uh, it is the main activity that we will do in, in soon in 2015. And we hope that uh, these activities will be uh, supported by the cooperation, national and international NGO, and the other international trade union also, Wonderful. in order to uh, uh, stop and in order to uh, get the minimum wage for our uh, activities. So that, uh, in the name of uh, trade union in Cambodia, we would like to uh, announce and call for support for our uh, uh, friends of the trade union around the world in order to support our activities and fight to the government and employer uh, that 
there are time to uh, stop our rights to uh, join the trade union and this is the uh, situation in Cambodia nowadays but I want to add more uh, most of the, the the membership of trade union in Cambodia they are from the government and food for sector mm -hmm. so they are women and nowadays we would like to encourage those members uh, become a leader because they are women so we get a week and in our uh, companies and our activity as well so wonderful yeah. and that's a really good short summary and also covers the kind of teaching that we're doing this week Amaran thank you very much for the video and yeah. the interview thank you yeah thank yeah. you okay thank you. thank you very much for agreeing to this um, interview um, just for the benefits of the colleagues watching this video can I just ask you to introduce yourself please my name is Asarin Gyalpadabi just call me Rin okay I'm from the State and Prices Worker Relations Confederation and I'm the International Affairs Specialist. Ah, wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, one of the things I'm particularly keen for people watching the video to get a sense of is, earlier in the week uh, we were talking about structural reform of trade unions uh, as a response to neoliberalism, um, globalisation, but also in the context of the big debate around trade union renewal. And I was really fascinated with your contribution where you talked about the needing to restructure the union on the basis of recognising the significant proportion of members moving into the private sector, uh, which kind of reflects a lot of my experience of British trade unions as well. I wonder, could you just, could you just go through that again? What was going on in Thailand at the time and what, what processes have you gone through to actually reform the way your union is structured to better reflect the proportion of members in the private sector? The thing that's going on in Thailand is, especially in public sector, majority of, let's say 90% of public sector are allowed to organize. Right. Only those top level uh, management people that they are not allowed to join the union right. by law. Yeah. So we think that we need to move to another sector to increase more membership. Right, okay. And part of the reason uh, that we see as we are the public sector, we have been um, handling with the uh, privatization uh, po policies from the government. So we realized that um, there should be uh, people on the ground, mm -hmm. a private sector union or society who can support us. Sure. So private sector union is one of our target that we think that if we can allow them to be our member, the, the membership of CERN will be increasing. Sure. And Back in, I think, couple months, a uh, couple, couple, couple years before I, I worked, let's say six years ago, mm -hmm. um, CERN committee has raised a resolution in the advisory board committee of yeah. CERC, and we we finally f um, agreed to uh, uh, allow uh, private sector union to to become our member. Ah, uh, right. And, okay. Uh, Right now we have two private sector union, two mm -hmm. big one, and another uh, migrant workers' rights network who are not registered, non-registered union. Right. Okay. And they are not allowed to be organizing a union actually by law. And another one is um, temporarily workers um, working in the those those workers who are working in the state uh, hospital in the south of Thailand. Mm -hmm. They are also our member. So regarding to this. We get a lot of support on uh, of the, the union membership and as well as uh, anti privatization Right. Okay. And and also just one other thing, just for the benefit of um, th those watching the video, how how could you kind of say the th kind of three top challenges are for trade unions in Thailand at the moment? If you had to kind of identify the top three issues, what would you say that they are? Mm, the 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 the, the most the most um, challenges coming into my mind is yeah. uh, the ratification of Edison 98. Right. That the Thai labor movement has been fight against now right. fight for the ratification yeah. for 20 years. Right. And there is no they give a lot of hope to us. Yeah. But it doesn't seem to be any time soon. Right. That's okay. One, another one is especially on public sector union. There's a lot of privatization going on. Ah, right. Okay. This is this is put a lot more responsibility to trade unions, uh, workers in public sector, to fight against privatization. Right. Okay. And another one, big, huge amount of informal workers, which include migrant workers. Ah, right. Okay. This is a big challenges that 
um, the workers, trade union workers, workers in Thailand are facing right now. Right. If you, I can tell you a little bit of the figure. Sure. The numbers of trade unions in Thailand is one of the lowest in the world. Right. Okay. The total member, the total workforce is 40 million, mm -hmm. but only 1.3 are unionized. Right. Okay. Yeah. So a tiny proportion. Well, on that basis, I wish you all the very best, Rin. Thank you very much for this um, interview. Take Thank care. You. Thanks. Bye-bye.